And now Hydro's 2010 with your host Chris Blackwell. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I was off there uh, getting the makeup put on for the last second, last time or two. Well, good morning and welcome to the 60th annual running of the Hydro's here on Lake Washington. I'm your host Chris Blackwell with Solid Video Productions, and of, as of course, as always, our good colleague and good friend uh, Fred Barley, Hydro Plane Story. Good morning, Fred. Good morning, Mr. Curtis. It's a great day for racing and. The I hope the weather cooperates with us a little better than, than it did yesterday, but it seems, it seems to be holding its own. I think we'll have a great day of racing. I'm I, I'm sure of it, and we're going to capture it all. I'm going to take it, put it on card. No. Anyway, a <laughs> little serious when we're there. So um, let's talk a little bit about Classic Hydros. We talked the other day about your favorite moments and stuff like that. And what is it that's that's different about the Seattle race course, Hydroplane race course, San Sears? race course that's what's called official name what is it that's different about seattle race course over all the other race courses it has a tradition of its own each race site has its own tradition and history and you know, things that are unique to that uh, race site it's uh, significant that, that this race uh, in seattle uh, was the first race on this side of the mississippi river and the dip to count for apba national high points in 1951 Prior to 1951, it was strictly an, an East Coast you know, uh, establishment sport. It, and there had been some exhibition races west of the Mississippi and prior to, to that, to, to 1951. This was the first, this was a race that opened up the West uh, for high, unlimited hydroplane racing. And we, we had uh, two local boats that year, in Slow Motion 4 and Slow Motion 5, owned by Mr. Stanley Sayers after whom the, this, uh, the pit area here is named in, in his honor and the the race course itself is, is honored as, as the, as the, in the name of Ted Jones uh, who designed the, 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 those two slow-mo boats and Miss Bardell and Miss Thriftway and many others but, uh, Ted Jones was really the, the father of the modern three-point prop riding and unlimited hydroplane uh, the slow motion four, which he designed, was not the first uh, hydroplane. It was not the first three-pointer. Or no, it wasn't even the first prop rider. But it was the first application of those concepts that worked uh, to get to. It. it was the first time that all those concepts achieved championship results. So it's very appropriate, totally appropriate for this race site to be have the pits named after Stan Sayers and the race course named after Ted Jones. Uh, the two men that started it all in this part of the country. Excellent, and, and they're to be saluted because every year it's 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 great to be able to see people. The weather's been a little bit tacky. Let's talk about the weather. This is probably one of the times that you know it's supposed to be summertime. That's why they hold sea fair and hot races usually because this is the best time of the year to have it. And this is a rare year. A few years back, it rained massively, so we can add this to it. But it's not raining. It's a slight misty. Yeah, it rained a little bit about you know maybe last couple hours where the course was open and I headed out here but it was pouring down wet but at least we're not getting soaked today and that's a good sign and hopefully hopefully the weather will clear up and be nice yes I'm, uh, I'm confident that it will but even if it were to rain it, well, it's, it may be difficult for the spectator that rain actually can actually help a race course it really calms the water down the first really bad example of, of bad weather we, in 1973, it was raining, it was cloudy, foggy. You couldn't even see Mercer Island. And the drivers were <laughs> driving the course uh, by counting buoys: one, two, three, four, five, turn; one, two, three, four, five, turn. They couldn't see what they were where they were going. But, but in that race, that was the first time the two boats ever averaged over 120 miles per hour in a heated competition. The competition was superb, and the water was absolutely ideal for racing. And I was there, I froze to death when I sure saw some great boat racing. Oh yeah, I, was, I remember too, it was freezing cold, but I had to change the clothes. Now, what is it also too that, uh, is this a two and a half mile course, or is it a two mile course? Two mile course. And the boats, the hydros do three laps, correct? Yeah, the preliminary heats are three laps, and the final heat is five laps. Final heat is the winner take all. Winner take all, and that's five laps. And it, is there, there's also provisional heat, which allows the boats that are have the lower points to be able to get into the final. How does that work? 
that's a, a referee's discretion, and depending depend on how the schedule goes and how many boats are available to, uh, to run. But, uh, generally, if everybody stays together, you know, see if, if after three sets of preliminary heats, and the, the, the six high point boats will advance to the final, and at the referee's discretion, he can uh, schedule a provisional heat, and then the winner of the provisional heat advances to the final as the trailer boat. He starts the outside, like five seconds back of everyone else. And uh, then he can race to win. Uh, that's a referee's discretion whether it be a provisional heat or not. Excellent. So uh, that's pretty much basically how it works here in a race course. So um, we'll look forward to you when the Blue Angels fly or whatever. And you're always welcome here. And uh, so, Fred, thanks for stopping. Any, any more comment? Oh, just uh, let's go racing. Let's get set for Miss Mad. Form it is still the Miss Mads, but it's under the name of sponsored by Oboy Alberto. Oh, by the way, Oboy Alberto, weren't they? They've been 40 years. I thought they were going to stop sponsoring, but I guess they had the hydro fever, correct? Well, they, they've sponsored boats off and on since 1975. They were away for a few years, and they came on board as a as a sponsor for the, for the Miss Madison team in the, in the middle of the 2000 season. And then they were so impressed enough to sign a full season sponsorship in 2001 and every year since. And we were just delighted to have them. I'm on the board of directors of Miss Madison Incorporated. And we're just, they're one of the best sponsors we've ever worked with and we hope to have them for many years to come. All right, well, thank you very much. And we'll be getting back to uh, Fred a little bit later on. So ladies and gentlemen, Let's go racing. Right on. All right. Happy sea fair, by the way, everybody. <laughs> uh, that was quite an interesting uh, last heat that they had there. What's up, Brett? Well, well, that was the B main for the unlimited lights. Uh, someone stopped in a, in a vulnerable spot in the first turn there in the warm up for the B main, and the official decided to call it. Uh, reasons of safety. So the B main for, for the unlimited lights is canceled and they'll determine a trailer boat uh, on the basis of total points. Interesting. So uh, let's talk more about classic hydroplanes. We've got a couple minutes here. Uh, how about the Bar Nimitz Bardal? How did that, how, that's sponsored by Bardal. They're still around. How did that come to be? Well, the only Bardal, a Norwegian immigrant, had been involved in American motorsports for some time. He had just sponsored a, a car at Indianapolis 500. Ted Jones and the, with Norm Evans and Myra Slovak as drivers that boat won the National High Point Championship in 1958 and he had other championships in, in future years 1963, 64, 65 with drivers Ron Musson and Don Wilson and in 1967 and 68 with Billy Shoemaker. Billy Shoemaker by the way is the owner of the currently running U37 a shoemaker racing team. So that's how Mr. Bardall got into it. And his daughter, Evelyn Bardall Manchester, also played a key administrative role in that team. So it's a, it's a, a Seattle hydroplane success story, and they greatly enhanced the sport by their presence. And, and Bardall International Oil was one of the first commercial sponsors uh, to jump on the unlimited bandwagon in a big way. The, along with Associated Grocers uh, for the, the Miss Thriftway team. And, uh, those are uh, the, the, the Thriftway and the Bardall were two, uh, were two teams that represented a major sponsor on a, on a large scale and proved what could be done on that level. One more question for you. I'll keep it short. One of my favorite boats growing up as a kid was Bardall and slow motion all those boats. But the Pan Pack, how about that? Yeah, the Pan Pack uh, team was the, the operation of uh, Mr. David Herrensberger. And he started in the sport uh, in the early 60s as, as a sponsor. 
the former Miss Spokane, and it was the Miss Eagle Electric. And he owned a couple of stores he called Eagle Electric in Seattle and Spokane. And then he merged his business with the Pan Pack Corporation in 1969 and won many of the races and many championships with drivers such as Warner Gardner, Tommy Fultz, George Henry, Mickey Raymond, and Mr. Harrisberger was also experimental with the turbine power. 1980, and in effect, it was Mr. Harrisberger's uh, turbine boat that was the that was, scored the first victory uh, by a turbine-powered boat. That was it's in upstate New York in 1982 with John Walters driving. That was the first victory by a turbine-powered boat. It's established a trend that we see today. And now every boat here in the unlimited class is turbine-powered. Specifically, the light bombing the T55 L7, which is the, the, the same engine that uh, Mr. Harrisburg the 1980 81 82 turbine pan pack. All right, that's a piece of anything else? Oh, it, no, it's, uh, it's uh, the uh, idea of a of turbine power back in the 60s at least uh, was considered science fiction. There were a few early attempts and, which failed. Uh, but the, those early uh, practitioners and left behind the germ of an idea that was later picked up and, and, and improved upon and perfected up by others, such as Mr. Harrisburger and the Pan Pack team. Wasn't that, when was the first time that they experimented with the term? Was it 1967, 68? There were a couple of uh, experiments in the late 60s. It was, uh, the first one to, to be brought to a, to a race, and none was actually brought to a race, until, uh, to a race site until 1973. Jim Harrington's uh, Mariner 2 Miss Lapeer team experimented uh, uh, for a number of years, but didn't bring a, a boat to a, to a race site until 1973. Although the production of the development had been going on for four or five years. And uh, in 1973, uh, you know, we had the, the Miss Lapeer turbine, which proved less than successful. And also the, the Jim Clapp's uh, U95 uh, turbine. With, which uh, was christened here at the, at the Seattle race in 1973, although, although it didn't actually enter competition until 74. That was the, the U95 was the first turbine boat to, to actually start in a heat of competition. That was at Miami in 1974. And, uh, and once uh, then Mr. Clapp died, and his, his widow carried on for, for a while, and then she retired the, 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 the team and then sold the, the boat someone else who repowered it to run its conventional power. So and it was a number of years before any, anyone else jumped on the turbine bandwagon. It was Mr. Harrisburger in 1980. And the concept really reached a competitive status in 1984. Three new, new turbine teams came on board in 1984 in response to the Rolls-Royce Griffin-powered Miss Budweiser, which is one of the most powerful engines ever used in a race boat. No piston boat on the planet could run, could keep up with it. They had to go turbine-powered to beat the Budweiser. And there were three teams in 1984 that used turbine power. The most successful of these being the Fran Muncy's Atlas Van Lines of Chip Hanauer driving. And that was the breakthrough, the Atlas Van Lines turbine of 1984. That, uh, from that point onward, the piston engine was basically history. Everybody eventually had to change over to the turbine power to keep up with the Atlas. All right, well, there you go, folks. Another history lesson here, celebrating 60 years of hydroplane and along shores, the majestic shores of Lake Washington. Fred, we'll check back with you again after the race is over and uh, do a post-wrap-up show here at Seafair. We're not done yet, folks, so uh, stay tuned. More are coming. Thanks again, Fred. Appreciate that, and we'll see you. Uh, afterwards for our solo video production supposed to wrap up show. Sure will. All right. And now once again Curtis Blackwell and Fred Farley. Well, Fred, <laughs> another Seafair year celebrating 60 years of uh, happy uh, uh, Anniversary Seafair and the Hydro 60 years. Went off without any hitches today, didn't it? Pretty much. Some good racing all day long. And just 
was one of the most incredible final heats I have ever witnessed in my entire life. The, the outcome was in doubt right down to the final t seconds. And uh, I would put the, this final heat in the, I was in the top five of all the races I've ever seen. This, by the way, was the, my 250th unlimited race that I have worked. Congrat. I'll, I would put this in with the top five of those 250. It was really exciting. It really was. I mean, it was bumper to bumper. I mean, they were just one, one forward, 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 back, forward, back. And, and um, the, so the United Six Spirit of Guitar and Dave Vilwalk did an incredible job uh, hanging in there within the, the rooster tail length of the old boy Alberto and Steve David. Never gave up for a second. He was on, on him all the time. St Steve David had to work for it every inch of the way. It was not handed to him. That's right. I, I would rate that way up there. I mean, I was excited. I was, that's good to see that the old boy Alberto, sponsored by Seattle, and, the, the, of course, your home, Miss Madison. You got a favor of that, right? Oh, yes. Uh, you know, the people in, in my hometown of Madison, Indiana, considered a, Ma a Madison boat. As they, well, they should. And the people in Seattle uh, like to consider it um, a, a, a hometown of a Seattle boat, uh, the, the connection with the, the Alberto company. And that's just fine with us. Well, anything that we have in your final comments here to close, wrap up the show? Just, I'm, uh, I'm so, uh, I'm, uh, usually I have something to, to say, but I'm just my, I'm so emotionally t caught up in this, <laughs> because I'm on the, the board of directors of Miss Madison Incorporated, uh, which operates this boat. They've now won 13 races in their history. This boat, built in 2007, has won seven of those 13 races. This Miss Madison, oh boy, Alberto, has won more races than all the other Miss Madisons combined. I'm not taking anything away from the, the, the previous Miss right. Madison halls. I mean, this hall was designed by Ron Jones Jr., Dale Van Wieringen, and the, and the crew chief, Mike Hansen. And from day one, this boat has just been a, an awesome machine. That word awesome is, uh, is used too often. I'm an English teacher. I, I don't like cliches, but just I can't think of an, another word that, that better describes this. Awesome. Totally awesome. Well, you know what, Fred? It's been a great time down here. I've been down here since Thursday. And uh, as always, um, I hate to see it in, but another year in the book, 60 years, and uh, 250, huh? Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, I can't wait to see the, the next 250. Me too. <laughs> we might have to see for a wheelchair, but that's beside the point. There's just something about the hydroplanes in Seattle and the people here in Seattle where it's so exciting. You just It gets in your blood. Hydro fever never goes away. And I see that we're running out of time. It's time to close up shop, unfortunately. Another year, 2010. I'm Chris Blackwell with Fred Farley. Fred, thanks again for coming. Thanks to you for having me. And everyone out there, hold a good thought. Absolutely. Stay positive. So we'll see you again next year here in Seattle and around the race course. That's, I've, I've already have that written in, and I'm going to be coming and visit you. I promise you I will be in Madison, Indiana. And it's going to be lots of fun. So I look forward to it. So until next year, ladies and gentlemen, this is Curtis Blackwell, your host for for Hydroplanes <laughs> in Seattle. I, I tell you, I'm, 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 I'm uh, fascinated and, and virtually speechless and awesome. And, 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 and Anyway, good night, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll see you next year from Seattle, 2010. Thank you, and good night. Thanks for ladies. watching. Copyright and 2010. Don't come back, ladies and gentlemen. I never got to turn my microphone on again. Uh, busy day here, folks. Well, technical safu there. Thanks for watching Saw Video Productions, copyright 2010, copyright 2020. Saw Video Productions, all rights reserved. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening.